the calling of Moses, this is the pattern of the call. And it's the pattern that is for almost all the people of Scripture. First, God chooses and commissions. Come now, I send you to Pharaoh to lead my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. So, what's unique about that? God chooses and commissions. He initiates it. That's very important. You know, sometimes um, some people, when I was doing vocation work, they wanted to be a priest, and I'm like, I don't see it. And I was like, that's what I want. I'm like, I know, but I don't see it. I don't think it is. I don't, I don't see anything that resembles God's calling in there. So, and that makes it tough because what we have to discern is whether God's calling or whether you are calling yourself. And one has to have the sense that God has called me. God has called you to this, to whatever it is. It's not you who, in a sense, what you chose it after you knew that God has called you. You don't choose it before God calls you. All right? And that's the way it always is in the Bible. It's the way that we believe it is for all of us. And so that's why sometimes people really do feel like, I've had this inkling, and then it was affirmed by someone who came up to me and said, you would make a great lector, a Eucharistic minister. And I'm like, you know, I was feeling that inside, and then, but I got this affirmation by something outside of myself. Because this makes it selfless, obviously. And you often have people who, they don't want the call. Don't call me. But they can't help it. They can't help it. You know, it, it, it comes and comes all the time. And so that's one of the important things is that God calls. And then there's usually always an objection to the calling. And it's often for good reasons. You know, I want a family, God. You know, that would be a good reason. Or I can't speak. I'm afraid of people. I'm afraid. Right? And then God reassures by promising his presence and he usually will give a sign, and I think most of us can point to that if you've ever experienced it. This pattern, believe it or not, is supposed to be for every one of us, not just me, uh, not just a priest or you know a religious or a saint. It is really supposed to be your encounter with the Lord. God has called you to something, and you're like, ah, oh, I can't do that. I can't organize the people. I can't lead a faith-sharing group, Lord. I'm not good at any of that. I can't read, lead a retreat or do a talk on a retreat. And then they go all kinds of, it's like, then there's the reassurance back that says, I will be with you. And I will do wonderful deeds through you if you can get out of the way and let me work through you. But I'm going to tell you one of the things, I think, anyway, how I've worked it out. I'm not saying this is like gospel, but. I have come to see in my own life, so it's a witness of faith, that if God were that clear, I would have no choice. So the fact is that I have enough of a light to trust in God, but it is not so bright that I have no choice but to follow his will. Now, I get to a point where I say I have no choice now, but yet I still will always believe. I, always have, I can always say no. But I'm going to tell you one thing. If the Son of God came down that ramp into this room, whatever he asked, I would do. I don't care, because now I would know. But there is this dialogue that God wants with us where we give our hearts to him. And the giving of our hearts has to be a free choice because nobody wants a gun at you that say, you must do this. But the, Because that's not love. I, I have to do this out of sheer love and trust that God, who, who called me this far, as the Bible says, will not leave me now. Right? And that is always, always the case. All right? Remember now, this book wasn't written as they were writing along. It's not like there's somebody writing a diary. This is another important thing, is that you will see, often see things, and if you read the footnotes, you'll see that it will point back to, it's like, they wouldn't even know that. All of a sudden, they're doing, like, the Passover meal, but that Passover meal didn't happen at that time? Or are they way ahead and now talking about something that happened? And that's why, uh, but I don't know where the word Hebrew comes from. Did it say? Yeah. So, 
we'll see what happens. But why don't we say a closing prayer? We'll ask to a loyal glory be. We're a little behind on our work. We may have to kind of do this when I come back from Jerusalem. All right? Let's do a little glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.